Woman that thinks her date ditched her gets a phone call that leaves her completely shaken. There are few worse feelings than eagerly waiting to meet up with someone you just started dating a few weeks earlier, only to have them completely stand you up without warning. How could they? The two of you clicked, and you could feel the excitement of love buzzing all around. However, as one woman learned, sometimes that initial embarrassing feeling of getting ditched is a sign of something much worse. On the night she was stood up, Amanda Shyway wrote on Instagram, I was getting nervous. Craig is not the kind of gentleman to just ditch a gal, and we were so excited to spend the evening together. Something was up. I never expected to hear the kind of news I received. She knew Craig Towler well enough to know he wouldn't just disappear. At 28 years old, he had made a great life for himself in Boulder, Colorado. He lived there since he was a kid and couldn't think of settling down anywhere else. This is my town, he said. I was a runner, I like to hike, and do everything outdoors. Labeling Towler as an outdoorsman was also a huge understatement. This guy lived and breathed every activity under the sun. He played all kinds of sports and hit the gym regularly. But it was 10K races that really got his gears turning. He was born for sport and everyone around him knew it. Towler was employed at the BBSC Endurance Sports, a company that sponsored sporting events for both beginner athletes and elite competitors. He worked hard to spread his love of keeping active to his community. And there was one woman in particular who had been fond of his passion for the last few weeks, Amanda. Towler had recently started dating the fitness trainer, and although it was still incredibly early on in their relationship, the two seemed to have fallen quite smitten with each other. So much so, in fact, that Towler couldn't wait to introduce her to his buddies, which was going to happen on July 4th, 2016. BBSC Endurance Sports always hosted a large annual race on Independence Day, which was then followed by an epic fireworks display over the city. This was the perfect time, Towler figured, to have a romantic night with Amanda around his friends while gazing out at a spectacularly patriotic show. That year, Towler was particularly looking forward to the race. This year was especially exciting because it was the first race I was working as the timer, he said in an interview. The festivities went off without a hitch, and once the final contestant finished the race, everyone packed up for the day to return home in preparation of the fireworks show later on. Amanda was now eagerly waiting to see Towler and find out how the event went. The night would only have been the pair's third date, but things were moving along quickly. And both Amanda and Towler seemed like they had visions of the relationship lasting a long time. However, after Amanda got ready for the evening of fun, she sat and waited, and waited, and then she got a phone call. It was Towler's number that appeared on her caller ID, but the voice was one of his friends delivering unbearable news. Cedric, Towler's best friend, told me Craig was hit by a car and was going to survive. He also told me Craig said he was really sorry to have to cancel our date. Amanda was left horrified, but the call didn't capture the full reality of the situation. Apparently, what had happened was an impaired driver slammed into the back of Towler while he was unloading his racing gear. Before I knew what happened, Towler recalled, I looked down and saw both of my legs detached. I was in tremendous shock at the time, but I remember everything very vividly. Towler continued, I was conscious the entire time and remember everything until being sedated for the surgeries. I later learned from the doctor that the makeshift belt tourniquets had stayed on my legs until I entered surgery hours later and are the reason that I'm alive today. Amanda, without any hesitation, rushed to Denver Health Medical Center trauma to be by Towler's side. Simply living through the accident was horrifying enough, but once Towler was alert and able to communicate with doctors, they gave him heartbreaking news. They would need to amputate both of his legs or else he'd bleed out. It was either life or limb. I remember telling the doctor, you know what, just do what you have to do. Towler was scheduled for five surgeries over the next week to complete the full amputation of both legs. And Amanda didn't plan on going anywhere while they happened. The two had become each other's rocks, 
and Towler needed the emotional support now more than ever before in his life, so Amanda spent weeks at the hospital tending to his every need. Towler admitted, I honestly did not know what to expect, but she was there immediately, no questions asked, and I knew she would be the one for me. The fact that Towler even took the time out to text her during the chaotic scene also scored some serious brownie points with her as well. She gushed. The fact that he was even thinking of me made me fall for him even harder. Recovery, as you might have expected, was the farthest thing from easy. Staying active and playing sports were Towler's passions, and now he had to rethink how he would do literally everything in his life without legs. He found himself in some incredibly dark places, but both his mother and Amanda pull him back into the light of hope. When I was in the ICU, I made a very conscious decision, he said. I was talking to my mom and I said, I need to accept what had happened and that it was real. Only once I had that acceptance could I move forward. Luckily, his will to move forward trumped his desire to give up all hope. In that short period of time, I quickly learned how selfless and kind Amanda was, especially considering the shape I was in. Amanda was a big part of everything. It 100% helped to have a partner there in such a hard time, with so many emotions going on. But the urge to keep active never left Towler, so now he had to adjust to the new norms of staying fit. This experience may have changed me physically, but my core values and life goals have not changed, he said. I am lucky to be alive today, so every second that I am here is a blessing, and I will use my life experiences to spread positivity and hopefully help motivate people to value the time we have. Towler admitted, it would be untrue to say that I have not changed by this experience. The fact of the matter is that no matter how positive my outlook is and how motivated I am to succeed, this experience has changed me for the rest of my life. Towler knew about the struggles of amputations firsthand, so along with rejoining the gym and resuming racing, he started an online support group called Amputee Concierge. Craig Towler lived through an experience most of us cannot even fathom, but it was the constant support of Amanda Shyway that kept a smile on his face even when he didn't want to face life. When he was down, he found strength in the stories of people like himself, people still changing the world. For Brad Sodden and his soon-to-be wife Liz, life was looking pretty good. The two had found their soulmates in one another, a companion who shared the same values and served as a strong shoulder to lean on. Three months before their wedding, life dealt them a devastating blow that would test the strength of their relationship. Brad was driving his truck with Liz in the front and their kids in the back. All of a sudden, the front tire blew. Before Brad or Liz could process what was happening, the car crashed into an embankment on the side of the road. Brad and his kids escaped with minor injuries, nicks, and scrapes. Liz, however, fared much worse. At the hospital, Liz learned she was paralyzed and would never walk again. Devastated, she tried to hide her feelings from the family, but Brad could tell she was far from okay. That's all the motivation he needed to set out to complete the impossible. As a combat veteran, Brad was no stranger to heartache and loss, but to see Liz in pain was too much. He told Today in an interview, when you get her to cry, I'm motivated, I'll make it happen. An avid hiker and camper, Liz would undoubtedly miss out on some major parts of her life without the use of her legs. Brad recalled her devastating words after she found out she was paralyzed. Go on without me. But for Brad, that was never an option. Brad wanted to build a solution to Liz's problem right in his own garage, but he had no formal training in engineering. He didn't have a college degree, and engineers he'd spoken with told him there weren't any reasonable technologies that could get Liz hiking and camping again. But for a man with a depressed wife, those were but mere speed bumps. According to an interview with Bloomberg, it took Brad two years and a bunch of beers to build the first prototype model of his ultimate vision, the tank chair, a wheelchair that works on every terrain. Look at it here, you couldn't pick a more appropriate name for the thing. In the same Bloomberg interview, Brad succinctly explained the chair's most obvious function. 
You have kids that got a football game on a muddy field? Cross it. You want to go fishing with your buddies? Go fishing. If it snows, well, you get the picture. As soon as Brad set Liz up in one of these tank chairs, her life changed. It made it where I could go out and go hiking and camping, she told today. When we went to the snow, I would sit in the car. Now I can get out and I can chase my kids around and I can go with them. That wasn't all she had to say about the life-changing device. Liz continued heaping on praise for her husband's invention. Just the hiking and getting out, I'm not a prisoner anymore in the car and the house. The best part of it all? Her newfound sense of freedom gave Brad a fantastic idea. Why not spread the magic of tank chair to other wheelchair-stricken folks who want to explore the outdoors? Perhaps thinking of veterans who have been wounded in combat, Brad opened up a shop dedicated to selling tank chairs, and it was a big hit. They're not cheap, however. The most affordable tank chair model starts at $15,000, while the most expensive reaches $53,000. That pricey model, Brad joked with Bloomberg, can almost do your dishes. All the money Brad and his team of mechanics make goes right back into improving future tank chair designs. I'm not rich, but I have a lot of fun, he told Bloomberg. Money does not drive me. This is all about the smiles on people's faces and the families that I've helped. Those people he's helped beyond Liz have touching stories themselves. Beyond his wife, Brad, along with the entire Tank Chair team, have been changing lives all over the country. Betty Jean Hammond of Wickenburg, Arizona, is one of the many people who can smile again thanks to Brad's ingenuity. Betty Jean had a problem. She loved her horses and riding them, but then she lost her ability to walk. Complicating matters, her husband had passed away and her kids had moved out. She was alone and, like Liz, she couldn't participate in her favorite activity. Betty Jean's farm wasn't going to take care of itself, but she couldn't do much of the work necessary to tend to it. Her solution? She called up Tank Chair, and they fit her with a used chair that allowed her to wrangle her horses with all the dexterity she could possibly need. Combat veteran Chris Sullivan also benefited from the Tank Chair. Chris served in Iraq from 2005 to 2006. Sadly, he returned home paralyzed from the waist down. As a result, his little son had only ever seen him in a wheelchair. Chris was never able to chase him around the yard or play many active games with him. But now with the tank chair, he could play with his little buckaroo the way any father might. In a clip from the Bloomberg video, his son went bounding through the mud and grass, and right behind him was Chris, zooming by in his new chair, faster even than he could have on two legs. It's the little things like that that make this whole job worth it, Brad said, referring to Chris's story. Brad was so satisfied by his work that he struggled to hold back tears. When you see happiness, I can't really describe it. It's just really cool. Everybody can whine and cry about stuff. Critics are so easy to find. You can't swing a dead cow without hitting one, Brad said. But at Tank Chair, they take pride in finding solutions to debilitating problems. People like Liz, Betty Jean, and Chris can be thankful every day for creators like Brad, who give them a chance to be happy.